Welcome back everybody, Michael Parati here with another video for you. Today I want to talk about something that I don't think I've ever seen really written down, even in a YouTube video. I know it's information that has been put out in certain Twitter spaces, on certain Twitch streams, I know Sagem's talked about it a lot, um, and that something is getting your first commentary gig. Commentary is something I've been insanely passionate about for over 10 years of my life now, and it's been a ton of fun being in both worlds, whether it was you know in the esports world when I was doing League of Legends commentary, when I've been doing the FGC commentary as well. It's something I love. It's something that I want other people to love as well, and I thankfully have surrounded myself with people that do love it and enjoy it a whole lot, and so it's a great time. That said though, there was a world before now where I needed to actually get into these positions, into these spots to be able to actually do the commentary that I wanted to do. Um, whether it was offline events like Final Round, or even my local, or whether it was online events like uh, Play Versus, or Transitional Combat, things like that. And there's a lot of paths in order to get to these types of positions, to get these commentary gigs. And so what I want to talk about today is three tips in order to get you that first commentary spot. All three of these tips today are going to be something that either I've done personally myself or something that I've had friends do. They may seem a little on the nose and a little self-explanatory when you do hear them, but not everybody is going to know that these things really, really help you out in the grand scheme of things. Tip number one that I want to talk about is, again, pretty obvious, but it's just commentate. If you want to do commentary, you have to commentate. You need that practice. You need to be able to show off that you have the knowledge and the skill to be on a microphone somewhere. There really are a million things for you to commentate out there. There's different fighting games, there's different esports, there's Jenga, for those of you who have been here a while in the FGC. Um, and I talked about a couple ways you can do that up in my last video, I'll post that up here. Um, but a big one is just commentating over empty VOD. Not everybody is blessed enough or privileged enough to have an in-person local scene. I know that I am one of the few that do have a local scene up in Boston, but I didn't always know that. And so if you don't have a local scene or you don't know about a local scene, this may be one of the main ways you get started in your commentary career, where you just take empty VODs, whether they're self-recorded from playing either online or with your friends, or if you find them on YouTube. YouTube is a huge resource here where you can pull videos from YouTube, commentate over them into OBS or whatever your streaming or recording program is, and then post them to your own YouTube. And you don't have to be good to do this either. I'll link below some of my original Dragon Ball Fighters commentary that was just solo commentary over blank VODs from YouTube, and I was terrible. I was absolutely terrible when I first started doing Dragon Ball commentary, but I kept with it. I kept putting out videos. I was doing, I think at the time, it was almost daily commentary videos where I was just pulling up Dragon Ball Fighters, talking about Dragon Ball Fighters, and uploading it onto the internet. And then once I did all of that, I was able to lead into tip number two that I'm gonna be talking about, which is create a reel. Creating a reel is absolutely a must do if you wanna be a commentator. If you are going for a position, whether it's at a tournament, whether it's at a team organization, and they're asking for commentators, you're gonna need a reel. And a reel is something that, it's like a cover letter. It's not a resume. A resume is something very different, in my opinion. There are people that may disagree with me, but when I think of a commentary reel, it is introducing yourself, it is showing what you have passion about, whether it's a certain game, whether it's a certain style of commentary, that's what your commentary reel is there to show. Personally, I know a lot of commentators write their own reels. They take all their clips, they stitch them together in a video editing software, and they upload them to their own YouTube. They have full control over what goes in, what is shown in their commentary reel. That way, when they are submitting it to different places, they know for a fact what is being submitted. There are people out there that do commentary reel edits for money, um, which is another viable resource if you have that money, if you have the opportunity to take advantage of those. And what they'll do is they'll ask for just a video dump, and so you 
give them a ton of your footage, they'll edit it up for you, and they'll give you a finished product which you can then go and submit to different places. Creating a reel is honestly one of the harder parts of being a commentator, especially for somebody who does a lot of commentary. Um, you know, if you're working multiple nights a week for multiple hours a day, over a month say, that could be hundreds of hours of footage that you're talking over. <laughs> So now, to condense that into a three to five minute package is a lot of work. That could be a lot of footage, especially if you're not really on top of things and keeping clips in a folder and going through it pretty much every time you commentate. One of the easiest ways that I've found to have clips ready and available to put into a reel that I can then you know, upload to YouTube is to take clips as I commentate. When I'm commentating these events, what I'll do is I'll have one screen where I'm watching the game, I'm talking about the game, focused there, but on my side monitor, I'll also have the stream up muted, so that way, if I think something is super cool that I said in my head, I can just clip it. And then what I do is I hit the clip key, it opens up a new page, I just hit pause on the clip, go back to the stream, and do that. That way, at the end of the night, all I have to do is name the clips, download them, and make sure I put them in a folder that's readily available. One thing to keep in mind though is stream delay. For other games like say Valorant, most tournaments do have a fairly large time delay on it. So if you say something cool in your head, you now have to also mentally remember that the stream is potentially, you know, 90 seconds, 120 seconds, you know, 180 seconds behind, and so you may have gone so far past the point already by the time it shows up on the stream that if you're not really paying attention you could miss it and then all of a sudden you have to go back through this whole VOD and find that point again. So it can be very difficult on some games where it's not super quick, super live like in fighting games but it's something that is really good to get into the habit for because it'll make that later process of making your reel so much easier. Because instead of having to go through every single tournament you've commentated or every single time you're on stream and think you say something funny, you now at least have a curated section. So that way you can go through just 100 clips instead of 100 hours of footage. There's not going to be any objectively best reel either because there's no objectively best commentary. Commentary is a very subjective thing so whatever foot you're trying to put forward that's where you put in your reel. If you want to be a funny guy commentator, if you want to be a stats commentator, whatever your niche is, it's the reel to show it. If you want to be a stats focused commentator, don't fill your reel with jokes. Whereas vice versa, if you want to be the joke funny guy commentator, don't only pick your analytical sides because that's what the TOs are going to look at and they're going to hire you based off of what they see in the reel for the most part. So now that you got your reel together and now that you know what type of commentator you want to push out into the world as, we're going to lead into step number three. Tip number three is going to be finding that TO, finding that person to send your commentary reel to, to hopefully get a commentary spot. And in my experience, when it comes to this, there are two major places to do it. You have Twitter as the main one. Twitter is absolutely massive to get commentary positions, whether it's you're looking for TOs that are looking for commentators, whether it's your friends are gassing you up on Twitter, or even if you're just putting your own reel onto your Twitter, pinning it as a tweet and retweeting it occasionally, quote tweeting it saying freelancer by the way, whatever it is you wanna do, Twitter's huge for that. And so if you don't have a Twitter, I would probably suggest getting one at this point. It is insanely important to have from just a networking perspective. Mine is this. So if you wanna hit me up there and we can chat about this a little bit, go for it. The other main place that I've found commentary work is Discord. And there's a number of Discords out there that are based around finding commentary positions. I know in the League of Legends world, we have Excellency Esports. They have a Discord that is basically set up to help provide people with the resources they need to 
find TOs looking for positions. They're posting in it daily. There's always odd jobs there for MOBA style work and FPS style work. So if those are your bag, look up Excellency Esports, hit up the Twitter there and get involved. Uh, the other place that I've found work personally is broadcast.gg's Discord. It's insane how many people are in there. It's insane how many jobs are posted in there, both volunteer and paid. Massive resource to be had there. Discord is not just for job hunting though, obviously. I mean, if you're in a tournament Discord, then you know what goes on in there. They have a general chat, they have the check-in chat, they have all these other things that you can use to be a part of the community because being a part of that Discord community will definitely help you in the grand scheme of things of wanting to be a commentator for that show. There's also Discords around improving your commentary. I know uh, Boston's Monkey Business has a Discord called Commentary Class. He created it with the sole purpose of being able to level up as commentators. There's a bunch of people in there as well that they do just that. They're either a TO looking for commentators. I know that Trace Complete's involved in there uh, looking for commentators. They have uh, spaces where you can post your own reel, get some feedback on your reel, see what maybe needs to be changed up, see what needs to be added. And so these are all kind of things that you can really push to your advantage and use to either be a better commentator, learn how to commentate in general, or find that first gig. Find that first spot that's gonna let you on a microphone if it's not your local, because if you have a local, it's a lot easier. Um, I know that when I finally found out about my local, um, traveling controller, it was in Boston. I found out at it after speaking with commentators at Red Bull Conquest. I was trying to find Dragon Ball locals, basically. And I showed up, I asked Dan, uh, the guy who ran it, Lucky D, hey, I said, hey, I want to commentate Dragon Ball. That's what I want to do, it's what I'm here for. And eventually, I was able to. Uh, you know, once I was a regular, once I was able to prove that I knew what I was talking about, whether by entering the tournament and playing in it, or just by hanging around and chatting with Dan and the other guys involved that I, I knew what I was talking about. So on a local level, it's a bit easier to get on the mic. I, I will say some places will let anybody on the mic, but it's practice is what it is. Whether you know, you're know you using those online tools, the YouTube channels that just upload VODs, or it's you're blessed as a local and you can show up there. And if you, know, you have a local that doesn't have a stream, that's an opportunity. Make your own stream and commentate it. Because if you're making the stream, pretty much you can choose who commentates. And so you create your stream, you choose the commentator, largely yourself, unless you decide that you don't want to do commentary and you're much more behind the scenes in production, which is totally fine. Producers are in high demand in esports. If you have a local, if you're blessed with a local and not blessed with a stream, Make your own stream, whether it's a laptop-based stream. It literally doesn't have to be this whole big production like you see at some of these other locals, Wednesday Night Fights, NLBC, Casa. You don't need big shows. All you need is a microphone and a game capture, and you can create a stream for your local and get that commentary practice. So use that. Create a reel. Go to Discord and Twitter. Post about it. Let people know you're looking for that commentary position and you'll get that spot. It won't be quick necessarily. It may not be soon, but eventually you will be given your opportunity if you keep posting about it, if you keep practicing about it, and if you're able to just get the job done. Oh, hey, uh, Future Doctor here real quick. I'm editing up the video and I realized that there was one tip that I kind of left out that was probably... Probably the most important tip uh, ahead of everything else that I mentioned earlier in the video with that tip being have fun, right? Like commentary shouldn't be a drag. You should be having fun every second you're on the mic and if you're not Something needs to change whether it's the way you commentate whether it's what you commentate who you're commentating with like if you love commentary and all of a sudden you're not having fun with it yeah, change something, but commentary should be fun. I know St. Cola talked about it earlier in this week on his stream, but it really is the most important thing to being a commentator, is literally having as much fun as possible. Uh, something that I learned back when I was doing phone sales is that your voice changes based on your 
facial expressions, right? So if you're sitting back and you're just, <sighs> yeah, and he hits the heavy tatsu, like, like that's a very different mood than if you have that smile on your face, if you're laughing, if you're giggling, and you know, Diego V hits this insane uppercut on somebody else's wake up and you're just like, holy, he hit the DP, it's insane. You know, when you're having a fun time and you're enjoying commentary, you're gonna have a smile on your face. You're gonna sound like you're enjoying yourself and chat is gonna know that you're having a good time and they're gonna have a good time because you're putting out that energy, you're putting that into the world and really getting along with it. So all the other tips, super important, but you can't do any of those tips without this new fourth tip. So work on number four, have fun commentating out there, and I'll kick it back over to past me to close out the video. Thank you everybody for tuning in once again. Those were my tips on how to get your first commentary gig if you are looking for one. Uh, if you liked everything you heard today, if you have any other questions about what you can do to either level up your commentary, get involved in certain commentary positions, or if you want me to check out your reel and see if I can give you any feedback, be sure to leave a comment down below or hit me up on Twitter. Uh, I'll be glad to help anybody with any of that because commentary is a ton of fun and I want as many people to be able to enjoy it as possible. So like I said, if you liked what I saw here today, hit that like button so you can show to YouTube that there's some good content here and needs to show it to other people. That's all I got for you today. So I'll see you next time. Thank you and peace out.